I'm gonna do a question and answer right now. You won't. I I won't. So Kim! Shh. Shh. No. I thought you were out of pink props. They said that to me. What? You, How come I got green ones and you got pink ones? What, you wanted the pink ones? I like the pink ones. I like the green ones. They're crazy. I'll trade. Why do you like the pink ones? I don't know. I just like the way they look. Is it okay for me to like pink? I mean... Am I less hey. of a man? Hey! Hey! Hey. Hey. Uh, Windy Q&A Friday. Dang, buddy! <laughs> look at them switches! Dude, I need to get one of those little... Uh, Alright, so first question. This is from uh, Josie Abbott. It says, Lo love the longer vid, but hey, quick question. Uh, have you looked at the KISS ESC PDB? Any thoughts? Well, it's funny because I have no idea what he's talking about. And Kevin was asking if that was a thing earlier and I honestly don't know. So I'll have to look into it. Doesn't the 24s come with? Nope. That's an all-in-one. Yeah, that, that's, that's a different thing. Oh, it is. And then this one is uh, Elliot Hancock. He said, what is the earphone from the goggles doing? Basically, I'm listening to the audio from the quad so that I can gauge uh, altitude and like throttle management based on an audio feed instead of just visual. I I need it, dude. I don't know. Um, Derek Thomas, he says, have you really enjoyed or have really enjoyed your videos, sir? I learned a lot through your work and uh, work of Rotor Riot crew and others. Had a quick question: Do you use air mode when you're flying, um, and do you trigger it on takeoff? No, I don't use air mode because air mode bounces and crap when you touch the ground and I prefer to not bounce. So I use an idle up switch, which is basically something that will keep the men throttle below a thousand, uh, whatever, you know, thousand, two thousand. It keeps it below a thousand. Uh, and then when I flip that up, it goes up to whatever my idle is, which is 1060 or something like that. So I have an arm switch, which will arm it, but the gyro is not active. And then once I flip that switch, then the thing becomes active and I can do that. And it also doesn't bounce when you touch stuff. So if you're sticking stickers on buildings and whatnot and you run air mode, you're going to full throttle into the wall as soon as you touch the thing that you're going after. Say it so casually like that. You know, when you're sticking buildings, you know, sticking stickers on You know, buildings. it's it's what's, it just what's, it, what, it's it's what what happens. I don't know. Uh, how do you prevent, this is Cam FPV, how do you prevent constant vibration in your GoPro footage whenever I, whenever I fly, no matter the speed or style, it shakes the majority of the time? Well, it's really about the tune of the aircraft and also the quality of the components. So, I mean, in general, that's kind of why I represent the stuff that I do is because it always has worked for me and I've never had any issues with it doing certain things. Obviously, there were a time, there was a point in time where like things were catching on fire and, and things were like oscillating and whatnot, but you know, things have changed since then. So, not really a... No. Dude, why is it doing that? Oh my god, it's what gonna it full throttle into my face. It went doo, 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 but it was like shaking. It was not healthy. Uh, this is Devious Chris cries. Uh, he said, "Hey Steel, could you do more? You could try to do more mounting of a 360 camera, yeah. or you should try to mount a 360 camera on my drone." So I have done this before. I did it in Dubai and flew around the Dubai World Drone Free Track, and it was actually pretty cool. But you know, the problem I have with 3D 360 cams is when you go online to post it, the posting part basically looks like crap. All the online videos for 360 videos are not very good. So, and these are like Kevin and John are ripping around me. I'm trying to get this done because it is Friday. I need to do a Friday Q&A. You know, the things that happen, the things that I do when I need to do them. Oh shit, there's a lady on the trail. Watch out, you might kill her. Uh, Q and A. Uh, hey Steel, this is from JSB4 Racing. Hey Steel, what about BL Heli? Do you not like? And uh, what is your opinion of ready to fly quadcopters? So, honestly, BL Heli was like a large step behind Kiss, at, like a little while ago before uh, I guess BL Heli S came out. So, I mean, there was a large gap between the performance in KISS and BL Heli, so I was kind of like, eh, I don't like BL Heli because there's obviously a performance decrease, but there was also the thing where you started the quad up and like the ESCs would freak out and chirp and do all kinds of weird stuff. So that's mainly the reason I don't like BL Heli is because honestly, it, it's always, I don't trust the people making the ESCs, so I don't trust the ESCs. That's it. Uh, holy shnikey, this one's long. Aaron Cam's cameras. Aaron Cameras. Yo Steel, just wanted to let you know how cool it is uh, to be in this growing industry and hobby. The FPV community is hell of hell of a cool family. Uh, hope you're doing it. Hope you make it down to the cup this year. I'm not sure what the cup is. And oh my god, the sun. 
like, <laughs> came out and melted my face off. Boop. Basically, I think what he's saying is he's thanking me for. Oh my god. <laughs> that was so sketch. God damn Sorry. it. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know how to respond to that question. But thank you for watching my videos, and I'm glad that I help people make things better by flying FPV. I, that's, I know it makes my life better. Uh, NCY underscore uh, ho. <laughs> ho. Who is the owner of Rotor Riot's channel? But he said Ho is the Rotor Riot of owner, owner Rotor Riot's channel. So basically, Chad Capper owns Rotor Riot as a brand and as a channel, and we put the content on there. It wasn't like that up until recently. There was another company called Lauren International that owned the same company. It's the same company that owns Flight Test, and they owned it, but now, as as of the beginning of the year, Rotor Ride is now owned by Chad Capper, and we plan on to change, changing the content to make it a little more edgy because we don't have to follow under a corporate rule anymore. Uh, this is another one by Alex Alexis Estevez. Uh, what was your job before YouTube? So I did a bunch of crap. I went to school for electronics engineering, got out of school, and decided I hated electronics because I got a couple temporary jobs at electronics factories, and I said, this is really ridiculously terrible. I cannot handle this. I can't work nine to five. Uh, I worked in the food industry. I was a chef for a while. I cooked freaking pasta at Provino's Italian restaurant. And then, uh, then I decided to get into outdoor stuff. I started rock climbing, and I got into rock climbing, did some, um, I went on trips. And then I decided I wanted to get a job at REI, which is our Recreational Equipment Incorporated. It's like this large co-op here in the United States that sells outdoor equipment. And there's a thing there called Outdoor School where they teach people outdoor activities like kayaking, hiking, camping, climbing, all this stuff. Geocaching, you know, and I did, I did that for about six, seven months. And uh, I ended up getting fired because... <laughs> I lost a Discovery Pro. I went. I went to go get a geocaching class. I went to go do a geocaching class, and basically, I um, I got done with my stuff early so that I could fly because I was like really psyched at the time. This was like right when I got into drones. I had just gotten a, a Discovery Pro and built it, and I had bought a GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black and the day before. Put it on there. Put the gimbal on there. I was all psyched. Went out, flew it. I had flown FPV many times before. And I started flying it, and all of a sudden it just started fluttering out of the sky. I'm assuming it was a NASA problem. I had no control whatsoever. I had perfect video. I was on 1.3 in UHF, like not even 100 yards, or not even a quarter mile away. Went down in a three-acre briar patch. Went there for four days in a row with like five people, metal detectors, all kinds of crap. Never found the quad, so I lost $2,500 worth of aircraft. And then right after that day, I got fired. That was like July 29th. July 30th, I got the job at Atlanta Hobby, and I worked at Atlanta Hobby, which is a hobby shop, basically where I kind of staged my whole growing with the hobby and understanding and learning about drones and kind of getting into the industry. That's how I got into the industry, and that's before I did YouTube, um, and then only recently have I switched to like where I use YouTube and, and Amazon Associate, which all the links in my description below are Amazon Associate. When you buy stuff through there, I do get a little cut, and it helps me out a lot, so if you guys have any questions about gear that I use, you can check out the descriptions below. Um, so yeah, that's what I did before YouTube. This one is from Vape Monkey. He, he does vape hardcore. I have a question. What about, um, what do you think about pilots running mixed motor sizes like mac, mi, matching K, or mixing KV like a 3 2204 2300s and 1 2205 uh, I, I don't think it's good. I wouldn't recommend doing it because you want basically whatever the most powerful motor is on the quad doesn't matter because it's going to take the least powerful one and that's the most thrust you can gain. So it's not going to full throttle and go sideways or anything. It's going to take the least power and it's going to think that is the max power. So it's going to adjust all the other motors. Uh, this is for from Mark Bachelet uh, for question and answer. How do you cope with con condensation on the camera lens when it's cold outside? I don't. I've never had any condensation on my camera lens. Have you ever had condensation on your well, camera lens? Yeah. I've had my goggles fog up yeah. before, but I've never had condensation on my FPV lens before. I don't. I guess we don't That's live in a. It's possible if you go straight from the AC in the house. I have had that in the summer. when I was in Florida. I would go from inside to outside, and it would be like 60 degrees and dry inside. And then you go outside, and it's like 100 degrees and humid. And all yeah. of a sudden, your goggles are just acclimated to the inside temperature, the and they fog up and whatnot. So the fan on the new on the, all the new Dominator and uh, you know Dude. attitudes and stuff works really well. What? Huh? Uh -huh. And. Uh, Let's see what this is. This is from 
NZOG says, uh, can you go over how to start your, how you start your quad flight? Do you start in auto level mode, switch to full rate, watching your vids, uh, you take off and pause, put the goggles on and then rip. So I'm in full rate mode at all times. Obviously, if you have a really well tuned quad, you can just pop it into level, start to increase, like let it, let it like start to gain altitude. Once it's gaining altitude, it'll pretty much maintain that attitude until you put an adjustment in. Even if the wind hits it, if you have your I-term tuned correctly, it won't adjust it too much. Obviously, it'll blow it a tiny bit, but it's not going to make the quad tilt and crash. So you have a few seconds or even more, depending on the situation, to put the goggles on and adjust stuff while the quad is still climbing, assuming it's not going to climb into anything. Uh, and then this one is from uh, Chris Michaels. Your videos have the snappiest rolls when you had slash have stick overlays included. I don't see any y'all added to the roll uh, to keep the camera centered. How do you perform the simple roll and keep the footage uh, going on that horizon? Uh, basically, I do add a tiny, tiny bit of roll, but I don't run a lot of camera tilt, so I don't need to add that extra compensation for yaw. So essentially, I will just do a roll, um, and because I'm only running like 25, 30 degrees of camera tilt, it kind of acts um, like it's not yawing or doing anything weird. Because I do have the camera angle for the HD cam at the exact same angle that I do for my FPV cam, and I'm assuming that's probably why it does that. This is from Tidy Weighty. Uh, do you get fed up with having to put drone in the title of your videos because people don't click on quad? So originally I would get pissed about people like calling it a drone and I was upset about it. I was like, no, it's not a drone, it's a quadcopter, blah, 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 blah. But you know, eventually it's just what the public has accepted as the, the name of these things. There's really nothing else you can do about it. It's a drone. It's the public has accepted it. It's drone. Quadcopter is obviously going to be the niche market thing. People are going to still call it a quadcopter once you're in. You're like, oh, I'm cool. I can call it a quadcopter. It's like calling a, I don't know, a, a drag car, like the number, or a sports car. Sorry, like a petite Le Mans car. You're like, oh, it's a Ferrari. But in reality, it's like a special type of Ferrari, a petite Le Mans car, or specially designed for that. You don't go out. But if you're in the know, you're like, oh, I know that car. That's a FX37, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's just... The public accepts it accepts it as drone, and I'm gonna call it a drone. And honestly, the problem is, is I have good, I have like cool content, but if you put in all this niche wording, then only niche people click on it, and I feel like my content expels and it, or expels. No, it extends, it extends farther than it expels acumen. No, it exp it expands farther than just the niche community. So yeah, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this question and answer. I'm gonna continue to post these hopefully every Friday. And I'm going to now rip with John and Kevin, because I've done this in the field on a very beautiful day. It's 70 degrees in January, and it's Friday the 13th, so let's shred some shit. Peace.